Forlorn Muskeg and Broken Railroad are our next destinations. Fingers crossed there may be some salvageable clothing of high quality yet to be discovered. Hey there, Legion, it's Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more of The Long Dark in our Against All Odds series. We are at Trapper's Homestead in Mystery Lake. And as I mentioned at the end of the last episode, we are going to take a moment to swing back in the direction of the unnamed pond and see if we spot the moose. And then we're going to pretty much go straight back to the office to grab supplies that can support us for a journey into Forlorn Muskeg. And the objective is to find a moose somewhere in the neighboring zones. We may even dip up into the bottom of Milton. We're not going to explore Milton entirely just yet. At least I don't, I don't feel like it right now. Something could change my mind. But right now my objective is to go to Forlorn Muskeg and Broken Railroad. And we, one potential moose spawn location is in the bottom of Milton, which we can access from the Forlorn Muskeg. But for now, I just want to pass enough time so that we have a little bit of daylight when we do leave. We drank some birch bark tea. Now that's actually not, like, restore condition just went away. So you saw our condition healing up there as we were passing time, which is quite nice. Let's go ahead and pass time for two more hours. We're eating away at our calorie store a bit. We are still restoring a bit of condition on account of just passive recovery. All right, so the sun is officially rising. Let's now drink some water, because I think that'll put us under our encumbrance limit. Perfect. Just barely, but it does. And I, of course, do have our MRE, which I'm saving for a rainy day. We plowed through the other MREs that we brought from the top of Timberwolf Mountain. And so with, when I found the new one, I was like, let me not eat this one immediately. They kept us alive, though, for sure. They served their purpose. I didn't realize there was another cooking pan, cooking pot here. There's so many cooking ponds on these cooking pats. Why am I saying cooking ponds? Cooking ponds. There are so many cooking ponds. There, there are a bunch of cooking pots on these loot settings. It's quite strange. On medium baseline resources like the cooking pots are just everywhere all right so the cured wolf pelt is done we did pick up our cured gut as well from in here and i did check that first aid kit good let's step outside shall we it'd be great if the moose was just here right now it's not likely but wouldn't that be fantastic if the moose was just waiting for us when we stepped outside i mean it, it's a sincere possibility really are you going to do this to me again you see what happened? I took my gun out. I didn't realize that bug was still in the game. Even though that happened to me a few episodes back and I made the exact same comment. Shut up. I know. <sighs> I just, I keep forgetting that that's a possibility. Oh, that's so frustrating. Okay. Um, well, now I'm a little bit encumbered and I really didn't want to be. So you know what I'm going to do to fix the problem? Well, I don't have any food on me, though. That's the thing. What I was, what I was going to say is I, I was going to read to fix the problem. I suppose what I can do is read for, like... Yeah, see, I need to read the book entirely to be able to drop it. But I do need to pass a little bit of time so there's some daylight. So, I'll, I'll, different objective here. My objective changed as I was talking about this. But read for an hour to get some more daylight. But I was hoping to drop that book entirely so it wouldn't be encumbered. What else can I drop, if anything? Yeah, see, now we have more light. It's quite lovely. I mean, I, I could... I could drop this cooking pot and grab another one. Or actually, below our encumbrance again now. Alright, I'm just not going to take the rifle out. So it doesn't do that to me a second time. I can also drink a bit of water, and that might help if that happens again. Sorry, it's it's distracting. I know. It's, it's a quirk with the game that the inventory weight doesn't properly calculate until you take the rifle out and put it on your shoulder. I need to find food. It's just annoying. I know you need to find food. That's why I'm moving now. I've got some teas that I can drink and some coffees for that matter. So I'm going to wait for the thirst meter to deplete a little bit. <laughs> or deplenish, as I said a while back. I think in season 5.5 .5 at some point. Deplenish as opposed to replenish. We're going to wait for it to deplete. But yeah, we're going to just poke our heads this way. I may even... Here's what I'm going to do. We're going to, we're going to take a look at the unnamed pond. Which is... And of course, do look for... Because this is what I'm doing. Be looking for 
antler rubbings on the trees. You absolutely want to look for those marks. Because that's a dead giveaway that the game is is about to or has put a moose somewhere nearby you. That's a big fur limb, or cedar limb. Yeah, it's as big as they get. I'm going to need to sharpen my hatchet soon before it breaks. But right now, I am low on food. I'm not going to sprint because I don't want to up my calorie consumption. But this is just me. Since I have to double back anyway... ...to get food from the office to prepare for my trip to Forlorn Muskeg. I'm doing so in a way that allows me to double check the surrounding locale. Just trying to get that sprain indicator off the screen. Every collection of trees I look at, I'm looking for one of them to just have <sighs> some marks. All right, there's the bear. Thankfully, not in phantom mode. <laughs> His cloaking device is deactivated. I'm going to use this vantage point to... Just see if I see any marks. Okay. Because it's not much farther, I'm going to keep going this way. I might stay on the high ground where I avoid pissing the bear off. I'm going to look over this ridge, the spot for the moose, and then I'm going to beeline straight through the zone that way for the office. running down to flat ground. <laughs> okay. Ignore me, Mr. Bear. Don't worry about me. I am no threat. Not interested in you today. I am just interested in a moose. Okay, I see the cabin. I don't see any antler marks at all anywhere zero zilch nada okay so we're gonna go this way because again i just wanted to peek my head this direction we're gonna start moving back towards the office and then we're gonna literally be on rails literally for forlorn muskeg i'm starving we had some accidental food poisoning last episode, which was unexpected, unpleasant, but we dealt with it. I'm going to drink two coffees just to get the additional calories in me and lose a little bit of weight. Plus, as I've been mentioning one of the reasons I wanted to go ahead and have coffee cooked and ready to drink on me is that it's nice to be able to to tweak my exhaustion meter that's an ability I haven't yet used in the series and it's about time we started having that ability I'm now going to step back onto the icy river. I see a wolf up there. But this is one area where I haven't looked, I haven't walked through here. So I'm just taking the usual path. Well, maybe not taking quite the usual path. I'm gonna veer this way a little bit because of that guy right there. 
I'm not interested in using a bullet right now. Notice that I got rid of enough weight, especially by drinking that coffee, to where taking the rifle out did not encumber me. I'm going to take a shortcut. I might be walking towards another wolf if I'm hearing correctly. That wolf was in my right ear. Pause. Yeah, right there. Really? All right, so that's where I want to walk. I can see the railroad tracks, so that's where I want to go. But they've got me between a rock and a hard place. <sighs> okay. I mean, I'm, I'm not scared of the wolf. I just don't want to deal with him. That's that's the thing. I just I don't want to deal with you. I'm gonna try and get on flat ground here. I just, I, I prefer not to mess with you at the moment. Can I, is there a skyrimable point here? No, there's really not. There we go. Oh, it scared me. He howled at exactly the wrong moment. So we're risking some sprains to avoid the wolf, which is annoying. Let me see if I can get on flat ground here. Damn it! Oh, okay. <laughs> Nerve wracking. Alright, so now we've got the pain blur around the edges of the screen for a bit. We're not going to worry about it. I'm pretty sure it's just a visual effect and has no detriment beyond that. Once you've dealt with the sprain, the pain is just a. It's a first pass at. Something that I've heard Raphael talk about in the past, which is that they want to explore more with implementing psychological states. They just want to do it in the right way. Which is really cool. Like, I, that's an approach that, you know, I fully support. And you, you want to think in terms of, like, not just what do you need to survive physically, but obviously mental health is also important. It's just as important as physical health. It's just not something that you can see. And the Long Dark plays on a lot of those notes already. So, actually having... States like cabin fever and pain, things that result to sensations and pain is not quite a mental health thing. That's still physical health. But my point is that um, the game wants to express things such as um, that, that, are, that are a little, little bit more intangible to the player yeah, that aren't think about is food. in terms of, you know, basic survival like food, sleep, water. Now, come to think of it, pain still falls into into physical category. Not it's not really a mental health thing, but point still stands. They're they're considering adding more psychological states, and I feel like, you know, having the visual effect is a part of that general area. Even though I guess pain does fall in into the physical category. We'll be okay. We'll be inside in like 30 seconds. Not even. Five seconds. Okay, so. I'm just going to bring some things that would definitely help to have with me. Like the beef jerky, those are good high calorie items. I'll grab this energy bar. I'll grab some sodas. Orange soda, the Stacy's. I'll go ahead and bring all the orange sodas. And I'll leave the coffee. The pinnacle peaches I will leave and come back for later. Not Pork and beans, stale salty crackers. All right, so we're going to be a little encumbered. Now I have a little bit of reading I need to do. Before I do anything, let me go ahead and consume some items here. How am I doing on water? Yeah, I'm fine. Part of me wants to just go ahead and plow through these crackers. Let's do that. We're gonna find more. There are still some highly civilized areas of the game world that we haven't poked our heads into yet. So I was just thinking, what can I chow down on really quickly that would give me a nice calorie store for getting ready to leave that would allow me to read the book that I have in my inventory and drop it before I leave? What all could I do? Okay, so we're definitely warming up. That's nice. Let's go ahead and read for four hours. Move the stomach. 
Oh, it hurts. Oh, God, it hurts. <sighs> really? I got that off of like 1 or 4%. That's the first time that's happened. So we have intestinal parasites now. Which means we have to take multiple doses. Well, the game is just not... We need nine or ten doses. Maximum of one dose a day. So we're just going to have to live with this for a while. Thankfully, we have the antibiotics to do this. And I can make reishi tea for the natural antibiotics. But man, that was that's crappy luck right there. Because I just had 4% risk and it gave me that. That's the first time that's happened. That's the reason that I only eat two wolf steaks at a time is I never want to push it higher than that. <sighs> Crap. That's really annoying. Like, I'm, I'm going to keep moving, but, like, does, does intestinal parasites, how much does that eat at my health is my question. Like, if I'm taking... All right, so that's my treatment for the day. All right, so right now it's saying that I've taken the two. So I need to wait for that to dim. So basically I need to wait for about this time tomorrow or possibly just for dawn. I'm not sure when the indicator resets. All right, that's fine. It's just an unexpected variable. Let's, I'm checking the drawer here to see if there's anything I might need to bring with me. I'll go ahead and pack this coal because we are going to a forge. And I'll bring that scrap metal with me as well. And what's in this drawer again? Now, the thing is, the really, <laughs> the really frustrating aspect of that is I now can't read that book. I can't read any books while I have this affliction. So, so much for that. We're going to put that down, and we're just going to get going to Forlorn Muskeg. I'm not going to let that get in my way. I hope that this doesn't hurt me too much. It shouldn't, because I've taken my treatment, but I need to take a certain amount of treatments. I'm going to be dealing with this for the next little while. It's been a while since I've gotten this in Against All Odds. From a narrative perspective, I'm actually perfectly okay with that happening. It just <laughs> was bad timing <laughs> from a planning perspective. Like, it, I was literally about to go explore a new zone, and uh, and we still are. But see, this is affecting my exhaustion, so I'm going to have to plow through that coffee a little bit more. It's affecting how tired I become <laughs> after spending the last couple of episodes talking about that. We now have an affliction for the next ten days. It's going to make life more difficult, and we're just going to, we're going to deal with it as best we can. Yeah, it makes life more interesting. It just caught me off guard. So, let's make some lemonade out of this lemon and head to Forlorn Muskeg. Do I need to bring any other food with me, apart from what I grabbed? I really don't think so. I've got the sodas, which, which are enough. I've got some, I, I picked up, uh... Do I need to grab maybe the chocolate bars before I walk too much farther? Nah, I'll leave the rest there. I'll leave the rest there. I just wanted to have mainly the sodas and an energy bar on me. That's enough to uh, to head in, and we have good. We have 0.29 gallons of water. So one thing I am excited about is that again, there there could be, as I mentioned in the beginning of the episode, there could very well be some discoverables in Forlorn Muskeg, especially at the Forge location. There could still be some nice clothing items. Every now and then the game will put something nice there. So, as much as I've talked about how Mystery Lake might have been one of the last areas where we found some of those, like, gauntlets, mucklucks, I haven't looked recently at to what extent we are certain, and don't tell me in the comments. If you know from the loot tables, not interested. But I'm hopeful that we still will find some items at the forge that are useful. And one of the things that I definitely will get, whether or not I, or one of the things I'll find by the end of this run that I don't have right now, that I'm much more confident that I'll find. Except, uh, or, or, but that is not the uh, gauntlets, or is not the mucklucks, or the earmuffs. We don't have any of those yet, and we can wear one pair of those in addition to having our wolfhide satchel. Or, not a wolfhide, our moosehide satchel. So I'm excited about that. Is 
So I have plenty of coffee tins and herbal tea tins on me to make more. And I have some reishi tea as well. I've got enough antibiotics to treat the infection from the, from the pill bottle without even making reishi tea. But I can use reishi tea if I have to. Okay. Into the muskeg we go. Goodbye, Mystery Lake. I suppose those intestinal parasites are an interesting little case study into when you're creating, whether you're creating content or not, once you've been playing the long dark for a while, there's a, there's a tendency, like when you're new, this is not a concern because like, you're trying to survive all the time. You have no idea where you're going. You have no idea where you're going to find your next food or shelter. And that's why the game is incredible. And that's how it hooks you. Yeah, I'm looking for wolves or a bear. But once you have been at this for a while, that changes. And you have a sense anytime you're playing. Again, regardless of whether you're creating content or not, but especially if you are and you're trying to communicate your plans, you have a sense for what you're going to do next and where you're going to go. And so the things that used to be part of the thrill of like the unpredictability of the survival situation can sometimes become stumbling blocks and, and they, well, they're always stumbling blocks, but they can become more obnoxious, more annoying. Um, it's easier to respond with kind of really, <laughs> as opposed to, a, oh no, I got a sprain or, oh no, I got intestinal parasites. How do I deal with this problem? Just doing some self-reflection out loud here because it's like, my initial response was annoyance, but it really shouldn't have been, right? Like, I think we, I think the whole purpose of the long dark and these, these systems being in place is so that things like that happen and force you to change your approach or your plan, your thinking. And that's exactly what happened. And it's kind of cool. But interestingly enough, just, I think, almost maybe universally, part of it is temperament, right? Like... Some people are less prone to frustration than I am. Some people are more prone. But then another part of it is just experience. Something about once you've been playing for a while, you have a tendency just to kind of have a plan for what you're going to do. You know the world. You know where you're generally going to find things of a certain quality. And when you have an unexpected event like that happen... That's just completely outside of your thinking of as far as like what you might have been planning for. It throws you. And you have to remember that you're at the mercy of the game. I left those in the uh in the backpack. I didn't need them. Okay. Uh there's some coal laying around out here somewhere. Yep. Might as well pick up a few more pieces of coal. So it's a nice clear day. We're gonna beeline straight to the forge. Not just any grape soda, Stacy's grape soda. Who is still streaming Long Dark again lately, by the way. Amongst other games. Stacy is back. On Twitch. I believe I mentioned that already, but just to mention it again. Stacy's back. Hey! Another book that I can't read for ten days. Alright, I'll grab the scrap metal because we're almost at the forge. Let's see what's in the first aid kit. I'll take it. Mmm, I don't even need it. Oh, yay. Okay, antibiotics I will take. Beautiful. We found a fair amount of coal. That's, that's rather nice. There's another piece right there. I thought I saw it. I was like, hey, wait. That's another one. Okay. Now, where's the bear? Nowhere near. All right, we're... We're gonna head straight out to the forge. While it's this beautiful, heck yeah, we're gonna head straight to the forge. Please tell me I have my bedroll game. Yeah, I do. <laughs> and I have the cooking pot. I remembered it. And there are some cattails. This is the other reason that I wasn't worried too much about having food. I just didn't want to um, be underprepared. That and the intestinal parasites distracted me, bastards.
There are plenty more cattails to be found out here. I might have even walked by some on my way to the uh, train because I wasn't thinking about grabbing any. But now that I'm looking right at them. Alright, so here's a dead deer. Once you get cooking level 5, what's just happened to me is no longer a concern. And that really is cooking level 5. That's not <laughs> secretly cooking level 3 like happened with fire starting in this series. Once you get cooking level 5, intestinal parasites from carnivore meat are no longer a problem. Beautiful day in Forlorn Muskeg, I have to say. It's not very often that we're welcomed this warmly. Literally warmly. It's 40 degrees thanks to our clothing. The actual temperature is negative 10. <laughs> right over there. Alright, so pain has just gone away. No longer have a blur, which is nice. Checking for cattails. I don't want to double back too far. I'm still moving more or less straight across here. Once we pass that tipped over tree in the center of screen there in front of this mountain. This might be thin ice. Hang on. W once, once we pass that, yeah, it is. Dang it. We'll be pretty close. This might be thin ice too. Yep, it is. See that blinking red exclamation point I'm okay with because it's it's a much more dire and immediate. I've never felt so cold in my life. It's a much more dire and immediate threat, as I was saying. So now we have hypothermia risk. We're gonna need to get to the forge, light a fire, and get warm. That's okay. I was trying to step off of that, but evidently we, we must have fallen into the ice at the last possible second. RN Jesus is not being kind to me this particular episode, is he? <laughs> RN Jesus is a bastard. If you don't understand <laughs> what I mean when I say RN Jesus, RNG is an abbreviation for random number generator. RN Jesus is a internet term for the mythical entity, the spiritual entity that controls all random dice rolls that exist in video games, such as the two that have crapped on me this very episode. Yeah. So my clothing is soaked and frozen. Our hypothermia risk is going to increase as long as that's the problem. The weather's getting worse too. And we're probably walking towards five wolves, because why else would I expect good luck at this point? Man, that, that really has to have happened at the last possible second that it could have. Oh, interesting. We're actually above... Check that out. We're above freezing right now. How is that? How is that? Is it the air temperature? It can't be. Our clothing is wet and frozen. I'm, I'm pretty sure we're still losing condition. All right. That slowed me down a little bit, but before I end this episode, I want to get to the forge and have a fire going, be safe and sound. 
Oh, wait. That's, that's a longer trip than I thought it would be. I didn't quite follow the right chain to do this properly. I'm not worried about catching hypothermia, though. I'm just I'm watching my condition meter warily. And we are almost certainly going to run into a wolf between here and the forge. See, now I'm thinking, in terms of what I was saying earlier, before the before we dropped into the water, in terms of the experience conundrum with the long dark, like, where the game's natural mechanics that are normally thrilling to a new player become frustrating to an experienced player, it's like, is there a way... Because I know I'm not alone in that. I'm not. I, yes, I was talking about, okay, how can I manage my reaction? Of course. But that it's not just me. I know it's not just me. I know from watching other people that it's not just me. So now I'm thinking, and this could be fun to talk about in the comments, like, what can be done? And Raphael's probably already thought about this. What can be done from a gameplay perspective, if anything? All right, hypothermia risk is gone. I don't understand how. Our clothing is freezing, but I guess it's just that good. That even though it's frozen, it's, we're still warming up. That's hilarious to me. So we're not losing health anymore. But yeah, what could be done from a mechanics perspective? You know, that would... mitigate that effect and keep things even for experienced players to where when those things happened they were minimally frustrating i think most of it really just comes down to attitude and temperament but it is an interesting game design question like is there anything that could be done so that no matter how good you got at the game it stayed its unpredictability remained fun, right? Rather than becoming simply a nuisance. Okay. I'm gonna start seeing and or hearing some wolves in a moment. So it's gone on a little bit longer than I intended. I guess I'll grab a stick or two, because I'm going to need to start a fire shortly. I've got plenty of coal. I'll grab a few more. So I am probably going to have to drop... Yep, I've got a steady aim right now. We got lucky. We got lucky. No wolves. I mean, there might there might be one close, but we're going to be able to get in here before we get their attention. Awesome. All right, let's have a quick look around. I see some rifle ammo. I see some more coal. I'm going to get low just in case. Fishing tackle, sewing primer. Let's check the drawer. More scrap metal. Locked locker and a bedroll. So if, the, if we had started here, that would be a nice find. But we didn't start here, so there's that. Coal, scrap metal, coal. Lots of coal. Let's go ahead and light a fire in here. Pretty sure you can still put coal straight onto the fire. They've changed that, or at least... Come on, little fire. It used to be that you'd have to wait a certain amount of time. I think I did this early in the series and maybe even late in Against All Odds 5.5. And I don't think they've changed the it fact. back, and I don't know if they intend to. Yep, you can still add it immediately. Okay, I'm going to add those pieces. I'm going to drop that coal right away because I'm tired of stumbling around so slowly. 
Okay, now let's see. Now we've got this simple parka here. What's in the drawers? There's still a potential to find lots of loot before we're done here. And I know I'm running long with this episode. I'm sure you're not too unhappy about that. I can't keep recording for too much longer. This hatchet is considerably better condition than the one I have. I'll pick it up and we'll we'll deal with that later. Got another emergency stim. That's quite nice. Revolver ammo. Yeah, I do want to look around here before I conclude. Chocolate bar and a bandage. All right. So we will definitely be able to hang out here for a bit. I forgot that there's a bed just waiting here for us. So the fact that we have the forge going is perfect. We can just sleep in a moment and be good to go. We'll have our save point. All right. Now, if you didn't know this was here, you're about to be shocked. Oh, wait. Oh, ho, ho, ho. look what I found. Some dog food. So we are in good shape food-wise. I didn't need to go back, did I? All right, so let's... Five. <laughs> you bastard! This is this is the new this is the new knife meme. This is the new. Oh my god, the gunpowder! I can already tell when I'm recording this session. By the way, the gunpowder episode hasn't even come out yet. That's in. 52 minutes from this moment, but I just already know. Oh my god, it was the only thing in the safe. I was so nervous to click and see what else was in the safe. It's the only damn thing. Oh my god, I hate you so much right now. This game, RN Jesus is a dick. Holy crap. All right, well, that being done. Um, I'm going to sleep for an hour so I get a freaking save point. <sighs> Next episode, we're going to hang out here for a bit. Maybe forge some stuff. We don't have a heavy hammer, so never mind. We can't forge some stuff. I could have had a heavy hammer if I brought it back from Timberwolf Mountain, but I didn't feel like it. So we're going to have to find one elsewhere, which is fine. We still have most of the world to search. That was a sound decision, and I stick by it. We just don't have a hammer yet. But we do have a, we do have a nice fire, which is keeping us warm and cooling off our... Or you can see our clothing is already drying off, which is nice, even though that, for some strange reason, wasn't a problem. But uh, I'll stop this one here so that we can get back to this next time and not drink our own pee. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. Damn you are in Jesus. Holy crap, I can't get over that. New episodes are coming out every day at 1 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. Comments are always welcome. Especially if you want to just rag on the random number generator with me. Let me know what you think. I'll see you next time.